Welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Today, we're going to be putting rocket science in your hands. I am a huge fan of NASA, and with recent missions like Pluto flyby and talks of going to Mars, I've got a lot of students that are always very interested in space exploration. And this one's going to be a lot of fun for those of you who just like to watch things get launched. What we're going to do today is build some rockets and show you a cheap, easy, and effective way to launch them too. We're going to explore flight dynamics using these rockets. We're also going to really focus on the idea of design and how the design experience is really using the scientific method. We're going to test out an idea, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it, too. After you do this lab, next time somebody says, Come on, man, it's not rocket science. You can be like, uh, I've done rocket science. All of the materials that I'm about to say, the total price tag came to under $10. Holla! First, to build your rockets, here's what you're going to need. Construction paper is going to be the material, and you need something, I would say, at least 65 pounds as far as the weight of the paper. Pick some rad colors if you want to swag your rocket. You're going to need tape. Scissors, some type of permanent marker. Now all that's just to build the rocket. To actually launch it, we're going to need some PVC. The PVC you're going to want to get is specifically the kind that is 7 8 inch. And then we're talking about a diameter from the outside of the PVC to the other outside. It's got to fit snugly into a 2 liter bottle. So that way there's not really any air pressure and the bottle can stay on there. And the size opening mouth of the 2 liter bottle is the same as a 20 ounce. So just bring a bottle with you to the hardware store when you go to buy your PVC. You're going to need three pieces that are approximately one foot in length. It's not super important that it's exactly a foot, but the three pieces need to be the same length. You're also going to need at least one other piece that is well longer than a foot, at least two feet. I've got one here that's 27 inches. You're going to need one elbow joint, and you're going to need one cross-section joint. One piece that's considerably shorter than a foot. This one here is five inches. Five, six, seven inches should work. Maybe the most important part, you need these two end caps. All of that PVC, by the way, literally under $3 for me to buy. Now that's for the launching device, and as you probably already guessed, you also need some empty 2 liters. You need at least one, but having a couple will help you have plenty of launches. You don't have to remove the labels, but you should wash them out, and they should be pretty much dry when you go to do this. You got all that? Good. Let's build some rockets. First step, we're going to build the base of our rocket. You're going to need your PVC for this. I'm going to go ahead and go a long way. I'm going to roll it using the PVC. That way I know that it's got enough room to fit on the PVC that it'll be launching from. Go tight at first. It's always easier to loosen it up after you've gone tight. Now that I've got it rolled there, I'm just going to loosen it just a little bit. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to put a piece of tape on there to hold it in the place that I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and tape it about three or four times. If you roll it correctly, you should be able to hold your rocket and the PVC should fall right out. So it should be enough to fit on there without too much extra room but the PVC should fall right through. Now I'm gonna work on our fins. So with our two pieces of paper, I'm just gonna make a triangle, kind of random here, and use my marker. I'm gonna cut this out, and this fin is actually gonna be my template for all of my other fins. That way I know they're all gonna be the same shape. Now that I've got that fin, I can line it up with another corner and trace it to make sure that they're all the same shape. So with my same piece of paper, I've traced that fin now in every corner. Then just go ahead and cut those out. With this piece of paper that's left over, set it aside. Now we're going to adhere the fins to our rocket. Okay, for this I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of our fin that's going to be right here. And I'm going to tape one side of it. And I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to line it up with the very bottom of our rocket. Try to make sure that it's parallel and it's pointing straight up. Next, take another piece of tape and we're going to line it up with the top of the fin. But I'm only going to push it onto the side of the blue that's already been taped on. Then there's going to be a little piece of tape there overhanging. I'm going to bend the fin over and then fold that piece of tape so that's not hanging off. Then I'm going to do that same thing to this other side too just to fix it to make sure it's nice and secure. And now I'm going to do the same thing I just did to the other fins. This next step is super important. We've got to cap our rocket, so put it down on some paper and trace it so that way you've got a circle. You're going to cut that circle out and it's going to go right there on the very top of the rocket. Seal it up with some tape and you want to make sure that you put enough tape so that way there's no real way that air can get out of there. 
Our rocket's gonna launch due to air pressure, so we wanna make sure that it can build plenty of air pressure in there and no air can squeeze out through the top. Blow into it a bit and make sure that no air is getting out. Once you got your fins on your rocket, let's grab that piece of paper we had before. Now we're gonna work on the nose. You need something around, something that is considerably larger than the diameter of your rocket. Now you take your marker and we're gonna trace a circle. Our end goal here is we wanna make a Pac-Man. Doesn't have to be perfect, but eyeball the center, or if you really wanna measure it out, you can. And then draw a quarter slice of the pie out there and that's what you're gonna cut out. Take your Pac-Man and you're gonna just fold it a little bit and at the same time push one over the other as if Pac-Man's got an overbite. And once you've got that in place you can slide one around the other to make an almost conic nose. Go ahead and put a piece of tape or two on there to hold it in place. Placing your nose on your rocket to fix it there, you can just place it on and a piece of tape tucked underneath and then onto the rocket base is fine. It won't look perfect and beautiful, but really the important part of this is that the nose is able to cut through the air. As long as that point is coming first, that's the important part. I'm going to place about two or three spots to hold that so it's nice and sturdy and doesn't wobble when it's traveling through the air at high velocities. Oh yeah, and don't forget, it's bad luck to launch a vessel without a name. So that's how you build the rockets. How are we going to launch them? you got to build your launcher. Here's all of our parts laid out the way that they're going to go together. Start by putting the long length pieces into the cross joint. Then after that, next step, those end caps are really important. Without those, we don't have any air pressure and this won't work. Then put the elbow joint onto the shorter piece, and you can connect the smallest piece onto that elbow joint. Now this can be rotated to different angles, and that's going to influence the angle of our launch. You can even have it straight up if you just want to test out things with height. If you made your rockets right, they should fit loosely onto that end, but not with a lot of extra room. Your bottles go onto the other end, and it's from compressing that bottle that we're going to get our launches. I freaking love polyvinyl chloride. Now launching rockets, it's definitely fun, but let's actually do some experimentation here. There's a whole lot of variables in this rocket that you may have noticed. How long our rocket is, what size, what shape the fin is, how many fins we put on a rocket. There's so many variables that you can experiment with. With all of these variables, I encourage you to test them out. When you're designing your rockets, build a lot of them. But the important thing is that you only change one variable at a time. That way, if there's any difference in the effects and the results that you get, you know it's because of that one variable that you changed. So I'm going to come up with an example hypothesis. The more fins that you have on your rocket, the farther it's going to go, provided all the other variables are the same. So I've made multiple rockets here. Valeli has got four fins. Sagan has got three fins. And the Rollins vessel has just two fins. When I was cutting out the fins, I made sure to use the same template for each one, so that way that variable would be controlled. In a good experiment, you have only one variable that is actually different, that you change, you manipulate it, so that way you can see what the effect is on the outcome. So when I built these rockets, I tried to make sure every single part of my technique was the same. The only difference, number of fins. Okay, let's get out there and launch. All right, before you launch, make sure that everything is really tight. You're going to be pushing a lot of pressure through here, and if anything's loose, your rocket's not going to get as much lift. So we have an angle here that I'm not going to change during any launch because that's another variable that can be manipulated. There is an optimal angle for launching your rockets, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You experiment. You figure it out. Okay, trial one with Rollins. Two fins. Now you can reuse these bottles. As long as you don't have any leaks in them, they should be essentially the same each time. Launch number two. This one's with Sagan, three fins. Miss you, Carl. Let's check out our results. Two fins, Rollins. 
And here, almost neck and neck, we got Laley and Sagan. Sagan actually went just a little bit further. So these two flew just fine, and the Rollins with only two fins did not seem stable at all. Just kind of, I don't know if it matters whether you got three or four fins. You can take it to the extreme. If we put 17 fins on a rocket, it might just weigh it down extra. Seemed like only three fins was all we really needed to make it fly. Certainly what we should be doing is also retesting and retesting, and I urge you to do that if you try this on your own. Hey, let's talk about those results. So I thought that the more fins that you had, the further the distance it was gonna go. Actually, it turns out three fins seems to be the minimum that you need to stabilize it. And really, when you think about it, could it be that the more fins you have, just the heavier it's gonna be? How many fins do you need? Is it really just three? Is four better? Perhaps some further investigation that you can do is what's needed for this. I thought the one with four fins was gonna go further, but it seemed to go about the same distance as the one with three fins. My hypothesis was disproven. Does that mean I was wrong and I should feel bad? No, that's part of science. Finding out how not to do something is still progress. It's a really important part. Being willing to admit when you're wrong and your ideas aren't correct, that's how we've gotten as far as we have. You gotta be willing to do that. In fact, one of the things I love the most about science is that it is willing to admit when it's wrong. So we tested the number of fins that your rocket has. What can you test out? What can you discover? I hope you also don't just launch the rockets, but you start refining your design. Test out different ideas that you have. Go out there and sample a few. See which ones work better. Once you've got those, don't end there. If you find a rocket that's working well, see what else you can tweak about it to make it even better. Hey, if you did this lab, I hope you had some fun with it. And I also want to hear about your results. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you tested out. If you enjoyed doing this lab, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more indie labs coming your way. And one last thing, I want to thank NASA and the SimAero program for showing me how to do this. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time. Lund out. Historically adored. From getting to the moon, we had economic boom. Think of all the advantages overcoming these challenges. We will face problems for problems we can manage. Let's get our assets to the red planet. I wanna go.